Giving the gift of empathy. Proverbs 25.20 says, Like one who takes away a garment on a cold day, or like vinegar poured on soda, is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. I kind of knew what it would feel like to take away a garment on a cold day, but I had no clue as to what it would be like to pour uh, vinegar on soda. So I tried it. And what it did is that the soda just violently sizzled, like it was burning. And so I thought, whoa, that's pretty dramatic. So basically it's saying that if I sing songs to a heavy heart, I'm like burning the person, I'm stinging them. So let's keep that in mind when I'm talking about how to give the gift of empathy. Hebrews 13.3 says, remember those in prison as if you were their fellow prisoners and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. So care as much as if it were you. That is a pretty, pretty lofty measure to care as much as if it were actually happening to you. And Romans 12.15 says, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles. Why? So that we can comfort those in any com trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. So God really, really wants us to be able to empathize with people that are hurting. So what does it mean to do that? Well, <clears throat> I know we can say to somebody, wow, that must really hurt, that must really be hard, and that's awesome. But we don't really, really, really know unless we've been through it. Uh, I have a friend who had a, was taking care of her elderly mom who had dementia, and uh, I knew that would be stressful, and I empathized with her and helped her kind of figure out how to have boundaries in that situation and take care of herself. I thought I had a pretty good idea, good idea what that would be like until my mother-in-law actually got cancer. And then I was like, oh my, this is much harder than I ever thought it would be and much more stressful to have an elderly parent who is dependent on you to take care of them, take them to doctor's appointments. And mine only lasted a short time compared to hers. But I remember thinking, whoa, this is harder than I thought. And I was empathizing with her, but I didn't really know. Um, I also have a daughter who was born with um, eye problems and uh, was something, um, she had cataracts and had to have her lenses removed and wear contacts as a baby. And I would explain that to people and they would say, oh, and they would think of contacts in an older person who just has cataracts and they go in one day and their lenses are removed and new ones are put in and they see better than ever and it's great, it's done. It's not what it's like when you have a baby born with that problem. It is very involved. And I happen to have met a woman about uh, two years ago who was going through with that. And uh, my daughter actually met her at a mall and then hooked us up. And I gave her support as she went through the same thing with her baby. And I remember her emailing me saying, why don't people get it? Why don't they understand? They don't understand how big of a deal this is. And I said, and they won't because they haven't gone through it. So I could comfort her, I could help her, and I really got it because I had been through it. Other people hadn't, and it wasn't their fault. They just really didn't know how stressful and how involved that was to have a baby born with that problem. So when people are sharing their pain with us, um, we can empathize, but remember, if it is something you truly have gone through, you're going to be able to empathize at a level that you can't if you haven't gone through that. Don't feel bad about that. doesn't mean you can't empathize, but just keep it in mind in how you respond and what you say. Uh, so it's easier to show empathy if you've been through it, but it doesn't mean you can't if you didn't. But first of all, you listen to try to understand from the person's perspective what they've gone through. Really listen, not just to hear them and go, uh-huh, 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 that was really hard, but really to try to understand how hard is this truly? What is this person going through? What problems are they experiencing? What is hard about this for them? Listen intently to understand. The next thing is believe their experience. 
don't doubt what they're saying. If they say it's really, really difficult, take it that at face value. If they say it's incredibly painful, don't try to tell them it's not or think in your mind, oh, that wouldn't be so bad for me or that wouldn't be so hard. For that person, that is really difficult. For that person, this is how they're experiencing that situation. Just take it at face value. Don't share your experience and say, oh, I've been through that, here's what happened to me, unless you really have, and it really is similar. Because like I said, if somebody were to share with that woman or myself back in those years when I was dealing with that, oh yeah, my baby wore glasses. No, no, not the same thing as a baby who has had lens uh, extractions and has to wear contacts and all that stuff and vision therapy and uh, uh, it's not the same just to put glasses on a baby. So try very to be very uh, sensitive to that, to not sharing experiences that kind of minimize what another person has been through. Not saying, um, I know how you feel unless you really do. Kind of keep that in mind. That's another one of those phrases that are sentences that are kind of um, weak if it's not really true. And the next one is don't offer platitudes and pat answers. Uh, we're really bad at that as Christians because we say, oh, just trust God. He'll work it all out. Just keep praying. I'll pray for you. It's nice, but it doesn't cut it. It's not good enough. It's That's not enough. Because what that is, is it just kind of minimizes it to the person. After you've listened, after you've have really tried hard to understand, after you've let this person know that you're, that you're empathizing and you're hearing them, then offer to pray from that, for them, but not as just a quick pat answer. Okay, fine, I'll pray for you, because that doesn't feel good. The next one um, is to not offer quick fixes or tell them what to do, because a quick fix basically says, oh, this isn't that big of a problem. Here's how you can fix it. Here's what I would do. And don't disagree with them in how they're handling it if by doing that, you're not going to be able to empathize with them. So you're not going to fix it because that makes it feel minimizing. Like, oh, it must not be that big of a deal. If all I have to do is, you know, read this one book and then my, I'll be fine in my marriage, then that doesn't feel very good. Okay, so the next thing is not talking about you, especially things that are going great with you. Remember that test with the vinegar and the soda? Not offering songs to a heavy heart. Okay, you don't want to, it's like burning them. It's like, oh, your life is really difficult and falling apart and you're in pain, but hey, I just got this great job promotion. Now, you might be able to do that with a very good friend in which you have a very healthy, good relationship to where you already know you both really care about each other or maybe your spouse, but it's probably still not the best time for you to bring up something really good. And then the next one is um, let the person express all of their struggles and pain and just listen, just listen intently and just don't, don't tell them I'd handle it differently. That's not how you should feel. Just listen. And that's empathizing. So if you can do these things, you will be truly offering somebody the gift of empathy. Thank you for watching this video on Change My Relationship.